Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Well, fresh off the Mopar Nationals in Columbus, Ohio. Back here in the shop, we got the kids back home, and uh, yeah, we're all really excited to get this car underway and really to get it out of my garage. And the reason being is that I have so many parts from AMD, from QA1, even got T-Bone's new hot rod in here. We've got a lot of the parts that we've taken off this car. We've got all the pans, we've got hoods, we've got the US car tool, stage two chassis stiffening kit. Man, there's a whole, whole lot of parts in here. And uh, to be honest with you guys, it's taking up a lot of space in my garage. So we're gonna get right to work. We're gonna start cranking on this thing. And my goal is actually to turn it out, hopefully by the end of September. And don't laugh when I say that, but I do plan on having this entire thing wrapped up and out of my shop by then because we still have the body work to do and also the hopes of getting the CUDA in paint before the snow flies here in Utah. So time is of the essence. I'm not going to waste any more of your time and uh, we're going to jump straight into it. And uh, you know, with a car like this with all the rust issues that we have on it, which frankly are really not that bad. I say they're not that bad if I only have to do floor pans and quarters, right? And that's pretty much what this is going to be. So it's really not a ton of work, but still a big job. And we're gonna start, you know, like kind of like building a house. It's always great to start building your foundation, right? And you wanna make sure you have a solid foundation to build upon. Our frame rails on this car are absolutely mint. A lot of the inner structure panels are awesome on this thing. And we're gonna start with the floor pan and also the rear footwell panels. We'll knock that out in this video too because you kind of do them both at the exact same time. So this car has already been stripped. There's really no lines underneath that we need to worry about. Of course, we've got the torsion support, which is also in fantastic condition. We've got these original brackets, which I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to transfer over. I'll have to ask the owner actually now that I think about that, but yeah, we can transfer those over. And uh, yeah, there's also the, uh, the seat mounts as well underneath here and also here that we'll have to preserve. But the rest of this is gonna be completely cut out. Um, you know, typically what I like to do here, I like to just take a grinding wheel. We'll kind of go on the inside of this and then we'll come back. We'll start drilling out all of the factory spot welds and then we'll use the hammer chisel, the air hammer. My neighbors will love that tool. And <laughs> it sounds like a damn jackhammer or machine gun. Uh, yeah, so I'll probably have the doors closed when I do that. Um, don't want to be completely unreasonable here, but we're going to completely strip that out. Get all the old metal out of here, guys. We're gonna clean up the frame rails on this thing, coat those in a rust encapsulator, and uh, yeah, lay the new pan on top of it, weld it in, and finish this thing up. Buckle up, sit tight, and uh, yeah, let's start cutting.
Alrighty, you guys, well, it's taken a whole lot of work to get us to this point here, but let's go ahead and recap everything because it is time to go ahead and slap that beautiful work of art AMD floor pan on the top of this and start doing some test fitting. Now, you guys saw me first take the grinding wheel, cut around just the inside of the perimeter here, so that way I could have some room to work. I like to leave like the pieces that go around, like the seat brackets, everything on top of the rockers, the torsion support. I like to cut all of that stuff out in advance, um, just so that way I can take my time and slowly work around it without having to deal with the entire mass of the floor pan in my face at the same time. So once I got that out, I took the um, impact chisel or the hammer chisel there and slowly worked my way around the entire perimeter. We took out the rear seat pan as well, or the rear footwell panel, excuse me. And uh, to be honest with you guys, I hope it's showing how good of condition everything is here. All that I've done, I've taken a wire wheel, I've taken a flap disc, and then lastly, I took what's quickly becoming my favorite tool in the shop, and that's the needle scaler. And I knocked every bit of dirt off the inside of these panels. Now I say dirt because there is not a speck of rust on the inside of these frame rails or the inside of uh, you know any of the support pieces here, the torsion support. It's an incredible, incredible condition. And I tell you what, it makes me never want to work on another car from the Midwest. <laughs> I wish my cars were this solid because this is going to save a ton of time and uh, you know really make this go a whole lot faster. So Cleaned everything up, guys. We've got it all pretty much well prepped out and ready now. Um, you know, I do like to, uh, you know, you could blast it right now. You could coat the entire thing in epoxy. You know, I am a big fan of the POR15 or the POR15 products as well. You know, you want to encapsulate um, that metal or seal the metal so that way you don't have any rust issues. I did do some research. I found this product here that I'm going to give a try. It's called Zero Rust. I think this stuff sells for like less than $15 a can. But uh, everything I've done on um, the reading up and the research on this, you know, it's going to be a great barrier to prevent any sort of rust in the future. Um, direct to metal application and, uh, you know, they do a lot of different testing on this. They test it against salt and all sorts of other things. And I tell you what, the only thing that it does not hold up to is complete submersion in water. So if this car at any time ever takes a nosedive into a pond or a lake, I would say they're going to have more issues than just rust issues, okay? But that would really be the only time that I would have any concerns over that coating. So we're going to give that a shot. We're going to put it on the inside of all of like the torsion support, the frame rails, all that stuff. Anything that we are going to do welding on, we are going to cover in our copper weld through primer. And then essentially the car will be all prepped out, ready to accept this beautiful AMD floor pan. Now. I've installed quite a few of these. They're fantastic. I always say the words, they're a work of art because honestly, they really, really are. Um, you know, all the AMD products that I've ever used have been really, really great. The fitment's been spot on, like all of these holes here for the seat bracket mounts, um, just all of the placement of everything, the body plug holes, like the bead rolls, just everything, especially for the Mopar stuff. It's absolutely fantastic. So the only thing that we're going to really have to do to this, guys, is uh, transfer over our console brackets. I do still have to confirm with the customer that they're going to run the same console. I'm pretty sure that they are, and there should not be a ton of tunnel work that we have to do because they are going to go with the automatic transmission in that 6.4 Hemi. But essentially, this thing is ready to drop straight into that. And we'll go ahead and we'll do that now because if I go ahead and I coat everything, I put the pan on the inside of it, it's gonna scratch the surface of that and I'll have to go back through and touch it up. So right now we'll put this thing in there, we'll get it exactly where it's going to be, we'll trace it all out, and so that way we can pop it back out, drill our holes, and the floor pan will be ready to drop in to the car. So exciting stuff, it's always really fun to do huge panels like this, because I tell you what, when you slap this thing in here, it quickly becomes what looks like a brand new car. Um, you know, with us doing the floor pan and then also the trunk pan, we're going to leave this rear seat pan in because it's in excellent, excellent condition. But getting the pans done on this car will be a huge, huge step forward. So let's go ahead. Let's get this fit up into the car, screw down, trace it out, drill it out and weld it in.
All right, you guys, so I've got the floor pan and the rear footwell panels completely knocked out. They're fully welded in, ground down, and at this point, ready to move on to bodywork. Now, I know I keep saying it, but this car is making it extremely easy on me. And as I mentioned earlier, making me regret build cars, building cars in the Midwest. <laughs> because for everything to fall into place, I mean, look at how tight that seam right there is for the firewall and along the... Uh, um, where the transmission tunnel is there. I mean, it's absolutely money. So very happy with the fit up there. You know, everything from the seat belt holes to the seat bracket holes, um, you know, everything across the back here. The fitment is super, super tight against that rear frame rail there. So, you know, it's, it's really, really coming together and getting giant pieces of metal knocked out like this make for quick progress on the car and it also helps me free up some space in my shop and hey, those of you guys oh hi baby those of you guys that are going to be saying where's the cuda where's the cuda well the cuda is completely buried in parts for this car so my mission is to keep on going here and we are going to continue cranking out the sheet metal work on this car i want to get it done i want to get it out of my shop because i still have plans to paint that car before the snow flies here in utah so, you know, going on to the trunk pan here, you know, really just like doing the front floor pan, guys, we're going to take our timer on the frame rails because they are absolute mint also. And the only repairs that I do foresee right now are along the bottoms of the wheel wells, which is very, very common in these cars. But again, with this being a convertible, a little scary in the sense that if they were bad, you guys can see like the tops are cut off and there's caps on the top of those and to my knowledge they do not make those they do not remake hi babe they do not make this uh this rear uh, support bracket there or any of the stuff on the inside and thankfully on this car it's all very very workable you can see i took the needle scaler and clean up along the edge i mean look at that that's crazy how clean that is so you know, again, I say it's clean. You can still see their surface rust and other things. Some of you guys will probably be laughing at me when I say that, but I'm used to working with shit like this where <laughs> it's Flintstone cars, right? And unfortunately, I've had cars where I have to do frame rails and everything else, but, hi, baby. But this one's gonna go pretty, pretty fast. So, if you guys haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. You're not gonna wanna miss a minute of this action. And again, I'm trying to wrap up all of the work on this car no later than the end of October. I think I should be able to beat that. This thing's gonna go pretty quick. So, well, that's all for now, guys. Take care. I'll see y'all again real soon.